Hey folks, Mr. Dell here. We are looking at histograms and box plots. So given some histograms, can we estimate what a box plot would look like with that data and then make some interpretations uh, from that as well. So this specific problem is coming from uh, CPM and it is course two, so CC2. And this is section 8.1.2 number 823 so 8-23 so let's let's see what we've got so it says the two histograms below show how precisely lou threw 50 darts uh, with his right hand and then 50 with his left hand study the two histograms so we know that the histogram here represents uh 50 throws 50 times he threw a dart right and if you look at our our bins here so our bin here is from uh, 0 to 1.5 1 1.5 to 3 3 to 3 4.5 so it's a 1.5 each time and that would be inches from the bullseye so in other words if i look at this this bin and i look at the 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 interpretation so we're at 7 so 7 times he threw a dart that was within uh, 7.5 to 9 inches from the um, bullseye. So that's what each of these bins represent and the frequency of those bins. Okay. So if I need to make a box plot from this, because that's what I, it needs me to do, it says estimate what the box plots would look like and make a parallel box plot. Well, first of all, I got to make a box plot for each of these. Parallel box plot just means that one box plot on top of the next with their values in line. Okay, so let's let's take a look and let's try this one. I'm going to try to put them maybe separately at first. As I go, I can maybe line them up and make them parallel. Remember a box plot. Here's the deal. I want to make sure we understand. So I kind of gave you a little sense of a histogram, right? You have your bins and a frequency of each of those occurrences within each of the bins, right? So once again. This says that only once he was between 0 and 1.5 inches from the bullseye. Over here, uh, looks like twice he was between, that would be uh, 16.5 and 18 inches from the bullseye, right, from each of those. And there's 50 different throws. It says that. So let me give you a little bit of a reminder about bo box plots. So box plots, remember box plots, a generic box plot, I'm just going to, just draw some generic box plot okay like that so your box plot always has your uh what what some refer to as the whiskers these lines and then you've got a box with a line in the middle right so just remember your your whiskers these two this is your lowest value your range your lowest value all the way to your highest value your one number that's what ends up on these two areas the number here this number is always your median okay the median remember median means middle so if i were to line up my numbers from least to greatest from least to lowest to highest and then i counted in i would find the very center number the very middle number that's the median and then here, this number here, where that is, is your lower quartile. Your lower quartile. And that, how do you find your lower quartile? Is it's the middle of the bottom half of the numbers. So I would count up and count down till I get the middle of the bottom half. And then that right there then would be your upper quartile. And again, your upper quartile, how do you find that? It's the middle of the upper half of numbers. So take the median, and then from there, the, the rest of the numbers up, and the rest of the numbers down. Those are your bottom and lower, your upper half, and you find your upper quartile by the middle of that number. Okay, so that's the box plot, a reminder of how a box plot is created. Well, the thing that's interesting about a box plot to remember, though, is because of the way that it's set up, and we have our lower quartile that means that one fourth so i'm going to do it this way in this set right here the space in there represents 
one fourth of the data of the numbers, right? One fourth of the data exists right there. And then, so therefore that's the same thing over here. Also one fourth of the, oops, can't see that. I'm sorry. One fourth of the data or the numbers. So right here's one fourth of the numbers right. There's one fourth of the numbers in here. Guess what? One fourth of the numbers and here one fourth of the numbers, right? So one fourth of the numbers of the data exists in each of these sections. So a fourth of them, a fourth of them, and a fourth of them, and a fourth, right? So therefore, all four fourths make a whole, makes the whole list. So that's a, the other representation when we think of a box plot. All right. So, all right, that's going to help us when we think about how do I take a histogram and estimate the box plot? Well, I've just got to figure out, first of all, if I have... 50 numbers, I've got to start and go, well, where's the middle? Where would be that middle of the numbers, right? So if there's 50, I can count to get to me 25. I want to figure out where am I at? What bin would represent the 25th number? So my, I have got one, two, three, this is four, four, five, six, seven. So there's seven so far. Seven plus five is 12 plus three is 15 plus up here is seven. So uh, 15 plus seven is 22. So right in this bin, seven more makes 29. So in this bin would be my median. My median is in that bin. So somewhere between nine and 11.5 uh, is my median. So remember we're doing kind of an estimate. So I'm gonna just for the sake of having a nice even number, I'm gonna, I'm gonna represent my median as 10. Okay. This is an estimated box plot. So I'm going to estimate it as 10. So the middle of my box is going to be 10. The lower quartile. So that was the half. That was the medium. The lower quartile is going to be half of this, right? Remember, so there's 25 numbers this direction. So a fourth of that would be uh, 12 and a half, right? So about between 12 and 13 numbers gives me that next part. So let's see. So I'm going to go 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. So right here, 12, somewhere between this bin and this bin. So I might just say that's 6. So I'm going to, I'm going to put 6 as my lower quartile. Okay. So there was 12 that way. So I got to go now. Uh, let's go 12 this way. So there's 2 plus 3 plus 4 makes 9 uh, plus 6 makes 15. So the upper quartile is going to be in between in this bin, right? Because I'm going to 12 between 12 and 13 on the number of data. So in this between here, so somewhere in that 12 to 13 and a half bin. So let's use 13. So I'm going to say that it goes to 13. So I've got my upper quartile, my lower quartile, and my median estimate. And then my lowest number I could say would be he got a bullseye maybe at zero. So I'm going to take that to zero. And my highest number looks like 18. So I might just take that all the way up to 18. So that represents the box plot for this histogram. So then what would be the box plot for this histogram? We would do the same thing over here. This histogram, again, it's 50 numbers, so I can figure out where my middle is. So my middle is, let's see, that's 11 plus 10 is 21 plus another 8 is 29. So right there in this bin is that halfway because remember half of the numbers is 25. So I've already got 29 between these three bins. So that's 3 to 4.5. So let's just say 4. So in this case, my median is going to be 4. So I'm going to go ahead and just go ahead and stack them up right now. So to make them parallel, that's the right. And this is going to be the left and I'm going to stack them up. So I I'm saying my median for this is going to be about four. So I'm going to put it, let's see, four would be that six, four would be right about here. So that's my median. So then where is my lower quartile? So it's 12 over. Well, this is 11 pieces of data. So my 12th 
13th is sitting in this bin, which is between one and a half and three. So I'll go ahead and make that two. So my two would be right here. If I'm lining, what I'm doing is a, a parallel box plot just has the numbers lined up, right? So that's four, that's two. Remember, see where right there would be zero. And in fact, I can go ahead and make my whisker zero on this end because that would be the lowest data. And as well, my whisker up here is going to be 18. So I just got to figure out where the top of my upper quartile is. So let's go this direction. So I'm going to go 12 to 13 pieces of data this way. There's two pieces plus one is three. Uh, gives me seven plus another three is 10. And now I'm at 15. So it's going to be in this bin. That bin is between six and seven and a half inches. So let's go with seven. So at seven, here's six. So I come down to about there's seven, right? So that would be my parallel box plots estimated from the histograms. All right, so that was part A. I took a bit, but let's keep going here. Let's get this finished off. So A was estimate what box plots look like. So there's A for this question. So B, B says compare the center, the shape, the spread, and the outliers between lose and left hand and right hand. Well, if we look at the, the center, the center is we're looking at um, the fact that the 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 right hand uh, is his his center is at ten, and the left hand his center is at four, and we can see that in the histogram, right? His center for the right hand it's a nice curve up, if you will, here. So a lot of the data ends up in the center here at about ten, is what we're saying. And then we think about it over here, the majority of the data is pushed closer to the bullseye. So four would make more sense for the center. So our centers are 10 and four. Our shape, we look at the shape of it. This is the push, most of the data is pushed towards the bullseye for the left hand. This one has a, um, a more centered towards the 10. And the spread, and we got outliers. If I think about my outliers, um, with the right hand, you can maybe say zero is an outlier, but I, 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 I almost think we can justify more that over here, the left hand has these outliers of uh, 15 and 12, because again, most of this data is sitting over here. All right, so then let's answer this question. Is Lou more precise throwing with his right hand or his left hand? So if we think about where he's, his precision is, and I can think about my... Um, IQR, my inner quartile range, right? My inner quartile range would be saying that Lou's on the right hand, he's consistently 50% of his of his throws are between six and, and 13 inches away from the bullseye, right? And over here, his inner quartile range is between two and seven. So he's 50% of his throws are between two and seven inches from the bullseye. So because of our inner quartile range, we can see that the range here is closer to the bullseye and even closer together. There's only five apart between two and seven. Here we've got seven apart. So he's a little bit more spread out with his right hand and definitely more precise with his left hand because his spread is only five here. His spread is seven. So Lou is more precise throwing with his left hand based on the spread or the inner quartile range, the IQR. Last one, using box plot. Use the box plot to estimate how many IQRs above the median uh, Lou's better hand is. Explain your thinking. So in this case, his better hand is left. We already decided that, right? His IQR, his IQR, his range is equal to 7 minus 2, which is 5. And his median, in this case, is, is equal to 4. So we're really one off from the IQR range, uh, the interquartile range, and the median. So that's how we'll estimate based on what we've got here and looking at the histograms. Okay, so definitely better with his left hand. So there's our answer to this question.